AD of ASU, our weekly guest here on the Burns and Gambo Show is the football program getting ready to take on Texas Tech on Saturday at 1230. Joining us right now in advance of that game, the AD of ASU, Graham Rossini here on Burns and Gambo. Graham, how you doing, man? Welcome back to the show. What's up, guys? Good to be with you. I'm gonna. I think this is really important. So I'm gonna start with this. Have you been to Cold Beer and Cheeseburgers to have the Sam Levitt Quarterback Ten Wrap, which features a choice of Nashville hot chicken or grilled chicken, romaine lettuce, ranch, <laughs> shredded cheese, buffalo sauce, and fresh tomatoes and a soft tortilla? Uh, I think you just picked out my dinner spot for tonight because there's a location <laughs> right around the corner from our house. Um, we're obviously big fans of Cold Beers and Cheeseburgers. They've been a longtime partner of ours and. Yeah, really excited that, you know, they're stepping up on behalf of Sam and, and Sun Devil Football. I think it is important to mention it, right? I mean, this is the future. This is what we're all faced with, the ability for companies to step up and be part of the NIL experience and, and to, to help the university out and help the athletes out. It's going to help you keep athletes. It's going to help you attract athletes. How important is this to you? This is huge, and this is this is what NIL is intended to do, and this is the this is the right version of it. This is a local business who sees value in ASU as a marketing platform. They want to support the work that our coaches are doing. They want to bring young people into their exposure uh, and, and promoting products. And you know, Sam is quickly ascending to you know star status here on campus, and for him to have an opportunity to represent a great partner and have a way to bring you know some of his own interest in NIL deals, I think it's a great outcome. And Howard and, and Bennett and the, the team over at Cold Beers has been a great supporter. We did the O-line burger last year, which was over the top. And so, you know, <laughs> Sam, what he's doing is this year's version, and we're super excited. That's funny. Graham Rossini is our guest here on the Burns and Campbell Show. And you know what? I, I, I had a question I was going to ask you a little later on in the interview, but I'm going to go ahead and, and ask you now because I'm, I'm, it, it sort of ties in. The, the story yesterday of Adrian Wojnarowski retiring from ESPN to go be the general manager yeah. of a men's college basketball program, and it, it 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 was a crash course in education for me to learn about what the general manager of a college basketball program does. And then I read about Alabama's general manager. Is this is this the wave of the future when it comes to college athletes to have a guy? Not necessarily Adrian Orjanowski, but a guy like that, a person like that, kind of running behind the scenes from all these programs. Yeah, I think there's a lot of merit to the concept. And we're studying a lot of those scenarios across many of our sports because right now you, you think about the life of a, a college coach in any sport, and you've got to wake up in the morning and determine are you putting your energy into coaching the team you have or recruiting the team that you need? And at some point, you know, we, we know coaches, they work around the clock, but there are only 24 hours in a day. And, and as the access to talent, the access to information becomes more and more important. I do think you'll start to see more of a specialization into scouting and roster management as opposed to coaching and player development. And that's obviously a very tried and true model in professional sports. I think is there's just more at stake in college sports now more than ever. Uh, There is some merit to having a group of your sports staff that can really be focused on future roster composition while the current coaches are, are developing the talent that needs to win now. All right, this 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 one I I don't know if this is the future of of college sports or just an outlier. Tennessee football ticket price hike to help pay players in revenue sharing era. 10% NIL ticket surcharge. Now a lot of fans are very insulted by this, but they've got to pay the players and they're going to make the fans do it by increasing ticket prices 10%. I don't want to. I don't want you to do a deep dive on it because I'm sure you've got to do a lot of exploring. But what's your initial thought on this? Yeah, I thought it was maybe perhaps a little premature. I mean, we're not through the settlement process right now with some of these class action lawsuits that the NCAA has been navigating. Um, you know, we're hopeful that we'll get to the other side of that here at the end of the month. Um, but but I think it does underscore the fact that we've got to be mindful of any way to create more resources to reinvest into our space. You know that we've talked before about. The cost of doing business in college sports continues to change and grow, um, and that's okay. I think we can run a more sophisticated business. We can we can use different ways to create revenue. I'm not necessarily personally a fan of a surcharge. I think there's there's a way to push volume, especially in a place like Phoenix and, and across. We've got seven sports that we talk a lot about at ASU that we should be selling out stadiums or arenas. Uh, those seven selling out stadiums and arenas, of course, the entire year give us a really strong economic windfall to reinvest in our sports. So if that's the decision that they've made, they, they obviously believe that there's some merit in the strategy. I'm not so sure that that would be the way that we'll approach it moving forward, but we're still, you know, mindful of collecting information and, and modeling a lot of scenarios um, 
based on how the settlement all plays out. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about it because you're doing everything you can to lower prices. You're doing everything you can to get more people into the door to experience Sun Devil football. You've, you've cut the parking in half. You're trying to give fans a reason to come to the game. To me, it, it was uh, hypocritical. I'm not sure what the word would be. Can you imagine if you go ahead and, okay, now we're going to charge you more money to pay the athletes. It does just doesn't seem like something that you're about based on what you're trying to do now to get more people out to, to the stadium. Yeah, there's there's probably some merit to that, Gambo. I think that's a good that's a good approach, and and we've just really tried to focus on building great game days, focusing on getting somebody introduced or back into Mountain America Stadium, Desert Financial Arena, and then let them fall in love with it again and want to come back. And when they come back time and time again, and when they come to multiple sports, I feel like we've got a really strong platform to generate the kind of resources that we need to reinvest into the work that we're trying to do. Graham Rossini, our guest here on the Burns and Gambo Show. I was born and raised here. I, I consider myself a Pac-12 guy. I would imagine you might consider yourself a Pac-12 guy, given that you're a you're a lifelong Sun Devil. Is is, is this uh, not bad? Not good? Is it just weird? Is this a weird kind of moment for you going into this first Big 12 game? Because I know Kenny was big on using that as kind of a tone setter earlier in the week. I think that's the way we're looking at it. I think it's a good tone setter, and and again, it's the reality that we're in right now. You know, we've been lucky to be preparing for our first game for over a year now and we've spent so much time as a conference together with the commissioner with the other universities that you know it it feels like we've been in the conference longer than a couple months now and so we've had naturally this date circled for a while now Uh, we're anxious to get to lubbock i I got a phone call from their athletic director this morning just welcoming us to to lubbock tomorrow and um, it's just going to be different and I, i agree with coach that it's a tone setter you know, we're off to a good start. We're encouraged with the early returns and how this team's playing. It ra- it ramps up this weekend, and now these conference games matter more than ever. And so we know Texas Tech will be tough. We know that they're sold out. We know there's great energy in Lubbock for uh, the Red Raiders and what they're doing. And so we're, we're pumped up to be a part of it and, and see how we stack up. I've seen the numbers. I know Gambo has, too. You had a lot of eyeballs on you last week. You've had a lot of eyeballs on you so far during this 3-0 and start. Is that – function of how well you guys are playing being on that platform all alone last thursday the way you were being on different networks that are a little more accessible to more people i I got to imagine just in terms of the number of people watching on tv you've got to be very excited about how many people have seen your product so far yeah we really are and 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 birds i think it's a combination of all those factors And, and we talked a lot over the summer about how one of the key benefits of the Big 12 is that it's A, a national conference, and B, that we've got great distribution with ESPN and Fox. And you know, we got a ratings report yesterday from the conference, and you know, three games in, our, our television ratings are up 152% year over wow. year. Wow. Even, even looking at the, the Wyoming game, I think we were up uh, 480% on week one just last year, the Thursday night, the Pac-12 network this year, Saturday night, ESPN, and just – we talk a lot about advancing ASU through sport, and there's a lot of people that are learning about ASU. They're learning about Sun Devil football because it's so easy to watch us on television. You, that game against um, Texas State was scheduled 10, 12 years ago when Todd Graham was there, and that was a big success for you guys. Obviously, you just talked about the ratings, and you got a big win over a good program. Uh, really give, good. Me, give me the thought. Give me the thought going forward on on scheduling. Now that you're in a new conference, and you, and obviously you got to schedule some of these games so far in advance. What's your what's your decisions when it comes to scheduling and how you want to go about it? Yeah, you know, a lot of these games are scheduled out years in advance. So we've actually got a lot of non-conference scheduled out through 2031, 2032. You know, there's a lot of SEC teams on the docket. We, we've seen that this year with Mississippi State. We return there next year. We've got some home and home scheduled with Texas A&M, with Florida, LSU, and Texas kind of on the horizon. And so those are those are obviously big non-conference matchups. We're excited for our fans to be a part of that energy, uh, getting a chance to visit some of those campuses as well. And but but the other games we're still kind of rounding that out. And I think now that we're in the Big 12 and we know that we're going to be playing in Florida, we're going to be in Texas with regularity. It does allow us to be a lot more open-minded in how we approach the remaining non-conference games that we need to schedule in the next couple of years. And you know, we've also talked a lot about how do we tap back into some of the Pac-12 legacy schools and find our way to get back to L.A. and play SC or UCLA where it makes sense or up in the Bay Area. Um, California, you know, increasingly important now that we're not in the Pac-12 and we want to find the different moments to get in that state and compete. And so, yeah, we're, we're open-minded, but we do like the idea of testing our team and, and not having games that are the quote-unquote guaranteed win, but we know that they're going to be tests. We know they're going to get us ready for 
a difficult conference slate, and we want to be looking at all those opportunities. That is interesting. I want to get more into that with you as the season goes on. Graham, we appreciate the time. As always, enjoy your uh, Sam Levitt burger or sandwich or wrap or whatever <laughs> it was. I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. Uh, and we'll talk to you next week, okay? Hey, quick shout out. I know we're on the road this weekend, but fans in the Valley Friday night, we've got volleyball 14th in the country, nine and one. We're playing Memphis at seven o'clock. So if you're looking for some Sun Devil action in town, uh, come and join us Friday night at DFA. Sounds good. Volleyball is awesome. Now we appreciate it, Graham. Thank you. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching Burns and Gambo. Click to see more from the guys and hit the button in the middle to subscribe. So you never miss a video from Arizona sports.